All right, what's up, guys? It's Mentor Didi, and we are to day five. So day five is a very important day, too. This is the day that your account, after today and tomorrow, your account is going to look completely different because of the summoning things that you are going to get on day seven are looking more different. So I would say by day eight, your account will be looking like a real Epic Summon account. As of right now, you just got the beginner account, but then you're going to be getting a lot of summons, and you're going to be looking pretty good. So today's goal is to clear the hunt challenges by building a wyvern 13 team so this wyvern 13 team i'm going to tell you right now is going to be just used to beat the hunt challenges up here in the corner and to clear up to wyvern 13 and then you can farm a little bit but i would not farm it very much for right now so the goal is just to complete this right here so we're going to get up to wyvern 13 beat it once and then we're going to beat um wyvern 13 20 times to clear this and then from there, we're going to move our gear back. So we are going to be taking gear off all of our core story farming characters. So whenever you do this part, you're not going to be able to farm on record history in the background. This is a part you want to focus, get through as fast as possible, and then get the gear back on your normal story farming characters and get farming again. So getting into this, I showed a couple teams yesterday's in yesterday's video. If you haven't watched yesterday's video, make sure to watch that for guidance on kind of teams you can make. So if you have Croza or Rose, have them as a front tank. Substitutes are General Purgus, Hywin, Crow. Those are all work. And then if you do not have a Knight for your front team, I heavily suggest not using a Soul Weaver if you have any of the Knight options that I just listed. So that's five different options that I just gave you. If any of those five characters, six star them and use them for front tank over using a healer. So the reason I do not suggest using a healer is because as you see, once we get into building these characters, your characters will not have 65 effectiveness. It's just not gonna happen. And even once you get your normal early farming Wyvern team, you probably won't have 65 effectiveness. Your teams are not gonna be a solid in-game Wyvern 13 farming team, but they are going to be a team that will beat it a certain percentage of the time, 80 to 90% of the time. <coughs> but the problem is with only beating it 80 to 90% of the time, if you have Angelica, as your front tank and one of your backline characters dies, your other two will not end up completing the run and then you will end up failing. And then whenever you're failing, your Angelica will continue to tank Wyvern and continue to heal, making your run take extra long. So whenever you're trying to farm a 20 run, your 20 runs will take you an hour and 30 minutes to complete it in background battling versus using a knight, it'll shave off 30 minutes of that time sometimes i didn't actually time it that's probably a a little bit extreme example but using a knight is going to save you probably 30 minutes a day playing the game getting into like day 10 to day 15 of or when you're burning your stamina so and just in the future too so having a knight as your front tank is just super super uh beneficial or having general pergus who is a warrior but he is basically the wyvern god so my team that I'm going to be using is Sigrid, Terranor Guard, Mui, and Crozet. Uh, another option for a team is Sigrid, Alexa, Furious. Using Terranor Guard in the spot isn't as good as Furious. So Furious on your Wyvern team is huge. He's a free character. He's going to give your team crit buff, which gives you 50% crit, making it much easier to build your characters. And he gives a two-turn defense break. And then he has an EE that gives blind chance on S1, which also adds survivability to your Wyvern run. So Furious overall as a free character is amazing. But the thing is, if you're using Furious, I wouldn't really use Mui. So if you're using Furious, since he provides all the support that you possibly need, then you can be using two heavy damage dealers to clear your runs faster. So by using Mui or using Furious, I would just go hard focus on having your characters that go behind that hit super hard. So... That is what I would suggest for that. Furious with Alexa hopefully will end up putting enough debuffs. The only issue with this team is keeping consistent debuffs up because Alexa only debuffs on her S2 and Cigarette debuffs. You're going to you're gonna just end up building your characters a bit different for this, but you want at least like 40 effectiveness on each of these for today. So when building a Wyvern team, the thing is you want 85 crit chance because you get a free 15 crit chance from having elemental advantage from water to fire. That it applies to everything in the game, even PvP. You have a 15% extra crit chance on attacking advantageous element, and you also get extra damage. Second, Wyvern has, I think, 80 effect res, or 100. He has, he has a certain number of effect res, and you need to build 65 effectiveness to have the highest chance of landing debuffs. So there is always a chance, no matter how much effectiveness you build in this game, 
that your debuffs will get resisted. So let me go over that real quick. So let's go into Furious and look at his kit. So looking at Furious, uh, his S3 has an 80% chance to decrease defense by two turns. If you Mologore it, which you need to Mologore this, if you're using Furious, any character you're using, if they have a, an effect chance on their skill for Wyvern, you need to mol uh, Mologore them or skill enhance them up to the point where you unlock that to the highest potential possible. I'll go over my Terranor Garden stuff in a second. So with Furious, though, you have an 88% up to 100% chance once you mo uh, Mologore it up to plus six. 100% chance to decrease defense for two turns. That's 100% chance to have a chance to land it. So by having an 80% chance to land it, that means 20% of the time when he uses a skill, he won't even uh, try to apply the debuff. So with 100% chance, once you get past that first check, then you're into the second check, the effectiveness versus effectiveness check. So there's two checks. So the chance of it proccing and then the chance of it landing. The chance of it landing is going to always have a 15% chance to get resisted no matter what in PvE and PvP, which in PvE, it's the dumbest thing ever. They haven't changed it in four years somehow because they their excuse was they wanted to keep players in the game longer, <laughs> which is so corny. They want you to have the game open longer. So you failing a Wyvern run is actually good for Epic 7 because it kept you playing their game longer that day. Really dumb, really stupid idea behind that for them whenever... It, they could just take it away and that way we can keep up with our accounts much easier but that is their reasoning behind it they gave it in an interview like two years ago super dumb but just know that is how this works so if a character has a uh, elemental advantage they get an extra 15 effectiveness i believe too so with 80 i believe it has eight or i think they get extra effectiveness okay hold on this part of the guide's a little scuffed but either way you need to build 65 percent effectiveness you get the extra crit chance i don't know brain fart on the effectiveness i'm pretty sure you do maybe you don't i don't know but either way just your goal is 65 <laughs> i'm trying to say too many things at once and i my brain is not fully working so going into cigarette so cigarette is grace of growth the only problem with grace of growth and cigarette is you're not going to have uh, her plus 15 the max grace of growth gives you six star and then it gives you max uh, molas on this and this. But in terms of efficiency for this guide, this was just the best thing that I could find in terms of getting to Wyvern faster and being able to six star other characters to start pushing story right after Wyvern. So it doesn't, it, Grace of Growth in here isn't the biggest deal if you six starter her and did the skills. The only thing is whenever you do do skill enhance, since she's a five star character, she just takes way more resources to plus 15 her. So by getting a free plus 12, you just save yourself a ton versus using Grace of Growth on a four star or three star for clearing story. It's just a lot more value in my opinion. But Cigarette, first up is this is the character we're going to get first. So with Cigarette, her entire idea is to have as much damage as possible. So you are going to have two of these necklaces here. One's going to have effectiveness. One's not going to have effectiveness. Put the one without effectiveness on her. Next up, the ring. We are going to put the one without effectiveness on her. Now, for the four-piece set, we are going to be using... Um, we are going to be using this. So having a little effectiveness on her is fine. But my overall goal with her, just for the sake of this guide, is to have her be the most damage you could possibly do. So 77 crit chance here. We have a little bit more we can do. Your goal is 85, like I said. But the thing is, for today, your teams are going to be a little bit scuffed. So just know these are not your permanent Wyvern teams. I'm just teaching you the basic mechanics of building a Wyvern team and then clearing Hunt. And then later, whenever you come back on day like 10 to actually farm Wyvern, you'll know what you're doing when building your team. And you'll have your team already leveled and ready, but they just won't have gear on them. You won't be farming Wyvern for a few days after this. You we're actually going to be going into the next Hunt Challenge. So once you beat one Hunt Challenge, you beat the Wyvern one, then we're going to go into Golem. Beat Golem and then Banshee last. Banshee is the hardest out of all of them. Golem's pretty easy. And Golem is the first challenges that pop up in another thing. So Golem is the best second one to do. And then into Banshee third. And you're going to get a free five-star character called Sermia. And a free five-star character called Vivian off that. And then you're also going to get two more of these attack sets. And two more of the free HP sets. So ton of value that you're going to get out of all that. But this is what we're going to be doing for our cigarette. So she has 11 effectiveness. It's not going to be enough for anything. But it is what it is. Next up, we have Terranor Guard. So Terranor Guard is going to be our main character that is going to be landing debuffs. So with him, he needs to be faster than your other two characters. And he needs to have the most effectiveness that you can get. So if you look at your Tyria's gear, it has a splash of effectiveness already. 
So now with having the splash of effectiveness already, we are going to take the two pieces that have effectiveness on them as well. So this puts us at 48. Our goal is 65, 48 is not terrible though. And we still have a couple rolls on this left. So putting this at 65 is not bad, but one thing that we can do is we bought the ring from Arena that is uh, this. So with this, you are able to have the option if you save the speed set boot to put this on Terran or Guard, and now you're going to have your 65 effectiveness. He's gonna be higher speed. We're gonna level all this up, don't worry. He's gonna be higher speed. He will have the effectiveness threshold. His crit chance, crit damage isn't gonna be the best. It, it'll be okay, but it won't be the greatest. So we'll go ahead and switch that onto him. You are going to end up spending a lot of gold for this. So just keep that in mind. Your gold, moving your gear to them will be expensive. Moving it off them will be less expensive. I, well, a little bit less expensive. So just know you are going to burn through a lot of gold today because we're going to be leveling up gear as well. So now our tank, we'll just go to our tank real quick. Your tank, you put your free day five HP set on. That's all you got to do. Just throw this on. We're going to upgrade it a little bit more, but just throw this on and you're good to go. And I will. Sh I, I had you save all of your charms up to this point for a reason. So hopefully you guys listened, saved your charms, because I'm going to show you upgrade priority as to which pieces need upgrading first. So now, and uh, there's also one other thing you should have been doing. So the last character we need to gear is Mui. So Mui is going to be doing decent damage, but we also want him to debuff too. That is one of the issues. So this attack boot has effectiveness, so we're going to put that on him. Next up, we have this piece has effectiveness. We put that on him. This piece does not have effectiveness, and this piece doesn't. So you can use either one. It does not matter between these two. I'm going to use the one that's already upgraded because right side charms are going, you're going to see very soon, right side charms for necklaces and rings are the biggest gatekeeper of progressing your account. So that is why it is super important to do lab every day to get uh con or ancient coins to trade in for right side gear upgrade charms so ring and neck charms and we'll have to go do that in a second so looking at this none of these pieces have effectiveness so we just have to take whichever's upgraded so we're just going to end up taking this piece that's fine and then we're probably going to have to do hold on did i mess up i might have messed up i think we need so we don't have any crit set of any kind left over, do we? No, we don't have any crit set. So the thing with Mui for today is we're going to have to go full attack set. <laughs> That's just the way it's going to have to be. This piece would be better. This is only plus nine. We're going to use this helmet. And this sword is better as well. It has no HP. But this has 16 crit chance. And it's already upgraded. So I'm going to use this. But you can do any combination of these. But you will not have effectiveness on Mui for today. So this is going to be the main thing that is going to hurt you is not having any on him. So there might be a way we'll, we'll keep gearing and I'll, I'll go over everything. There might be a way that we can squeeze out some effectiveness uh, between moving gear between our characters and just look at my end results before you start moving your gear. So just bear with me through the guide as I show you a little bit more. So next up, we want to upgrade cigarettes daydream joker quite a bit so we want to get it to at least plus 15 the goal is to get all three of the characters that are on daydream joker up to 15 so you're not going to have the other artifacts like say if you're using furious furious is going to be built similar to terranor guard alexa is going to be built the same way that i just built mui except you want some effectiveness on alexa or cigarette if you're doing that team so with terranor guard we're definitely going to have enough effectiveness so we might end up having to move some of these pieces over to Mui. So let's enhance this. So the thing with enhancing this, you only need to enhance it a little bit. You don't need to enhance it a ton. So let's just enhance it to plus nine for now and look at our effectiveness. And we're rolling speed on it, which is actually super good. So the effectiveness is already 62%. It's basically already the number we need. So having 62 effectiveness with this, that means that some of this gear could have went to Mui. So what we may end up doing is moving this piece to Mui since it has seven. So let's go ahead and move this piece to Mui. I guess I don't need a sword. It's right here, isn't it? I'm so used to playing my other account. And we'll move the other piece to Terranor Guard. As you see, I'm wasting a ton of gold. So try to be a little bit more efficient than I am. You can upgrade the gear before you put it on your characters. So now we're down to 55, meaning we need to upgrade this a little bit more. I'm just going to upgrade it to plus 10. That's a good starting or stopping point. So by putting it up to plus 10, we are now sitting at 58. That's going to be good enough for today. Like I said, we only have to beat it one time today. So we're, we're just getting as close as we can. But this is hopefully showing you what you need to be going in to do to get 
used to gearing so when you come back to gear your wyvern 13 team once we clear more story and get more gear that's actually that's a lot of crit chance that's super super nice so i'm only going to level this up to plus 12 because going to plus 15 is going to take a lot of resources so get that up to plus 12 for now the helmet we definitely need to upgrade quite a bit so let's go ahead and throw some of our charms in here and those are terrible just double mineral crit damage or a double mineral speed one of the two i think minimal and crit roll damage on this is four okay so that's fine plus 12 will work for that so now the boots we need to upgrade quite a bit the boots are the one of the more important pieces so right side gear is the most important when upgrading for a wyvern well just in general right side gear is always going to give you the most stat because it has a percentage stat so always oh wait, eight effectiveness is a really good roll nice that's huge so we got really lucky on the effectiveness on these boots so what i was saying before whenever we come back to regear our wyvern team later you're going to have three pair of these boots so whichever you're going to be able to mix and match with whichever one of the three pairs rolls high effectiveness you can throw that on your wyvern team and it's going to be really nice so now coming from here we're going to go ahead and upgrade this ring to plus six for now we definitely need to upgrade it more, and I'm going to show you how to get a few more charms. So his gear is upgraded. Turn our guard this. Let's just get to plus nine. Okay, so now that that is plus nine, we'll go ahead and look up at Crozet. Crozet needs his boots upgraded more. Uh, the Crozet's boots are some of the most important pieces because they give HP, and it's a piece that you can actually upgrade early on. So, and using your charms, all of the charms are the same amount of value. Using three white charms is equal to using, um, three white charms is equal to using one of these, and three of these is equal to using one of these. So it's just each color is a multiplier of three of the one before it. So now the next most important is going to be the chest and helmet. Crozet's sword is not important to upgrade to plus 15 uh, for early trying to get this because it gives attack. Yes, you get substat rolls, but the thing with upgrading a helmet is you get flat HP every time it levels up, plus you are getting the substat rolls. So in all the crows that needs is HP and defense, and he will function, or whatever your front tank is, only needs HP and defense. So helmet, boots, helmet, chest are highest priority when upgrading on your characters that are front tanking. In terms of your damage dealers, it is going to be your sword, and then your boots, and then um, sword and boots. So this could be an 18 speed early game piece. That's actually insane. I'm going to stop at plus 12 for now on it though. So I, I'm, I'm going to show uh, the next part is going in and grabbing things from shop. So while watching this, if any of you are going to be um, building a different team and need help or help deciding on which team to use, like I said, the best I showed two of the best teams that you can do. But if you need any help with Wyvern, join the Discord. You will, if you ask in there, tell us your units. You will be walked through exactly what to do right away. So, yes, it's a little bit of work joining the Discord and doing that. But hey, you'll have a Wyvern team and you'll have finished the thing today. So, join the Discord and also if you are looking for a guild, join the Discord to get into a guild we have gotten 250 to 300 players and new player guilds within the last couple days so feel free to hop in there we can get you in a guild within probably 30 minutes of you putting your name in there and then you'll start getting the guild bonuses and going into guild one thing with guild is you need to be donating every day and stocking up this currency i will be showing you what to spend this currency on here shortly uh, we're going to be buying the equipment conversion box and we're going to be buying a lab compass, but you need to get into guild as fast as, fast as possible to get Brave Crest because artifact charms are the hardest item to get in the game. They're the most gated item overall for even late game players. So artifact charms are always an annoyance to get. So the sooner you get in and start earning Brave Crest by donating and doing aid, then by donating you get 50 a day, doing aid you get quite a bit and then doing your weekly missions you see this is a new guild we've been a guild for three days and we've already almost maxed out our things i think and we only have 24 members so that's how active our new guilds are so if you're an existing player in a dead guild you can leave your guild even if you're level 70 leave your guild come join one of the new guild or player guilds you'll win all your guild war fights because you'll be able to be you'll be fighting newbies so it's a very easy way to start progressing your epic 7 account quickly but that is all i have for guilds to show there but in terms of what i just did in labyrinth shop make sure you're doing your lab every day this is super important 
because if you're not doing lab every day, you are not going to be able to upgrade your right side enough. So if you go into your battle and go to Great Farchi Labyrinth, you need to be just at least burning your thing each day. And then your goal is to be getting as or as far as you can in each one. So for day five, I am to Nixie Sanctum, but I haven't started it yet because I am currently going back and getting all of these. So I'm 100% of the area here. I'm going to 100% the area here for an extra 200. I'm not going to worry about these two. Those are not important. In terms of area one, you do you can 100% them as well. You can I would 100% stage one and stage two to get these 200 and then start putting all of them in the Nixie Sanctum. Don't worry about getting that other gear. You can go back and 100% the stuff later to get the full bonus rewards and the Skystone. You get like 80 Skystones or something for doing it. But right now you want to be pushing Nixie Sanctum because Nixie Sanctum drops some decent gear and then Malicus is consciousness. Once you beat Nixie Sanctum, which takes like two weeks, once you get to Malakas's Consciousness, it takes probably longer than that, actually. Once you get to Malakas's Consciousness, this drops insane gear that you can use at in-game PvP. So in-game PvP, like higher RTA, the gear is very, very good. So now that we have done all that, we are going to need to go into our teams again, and we will be upgrading our right side gear. So cigarettes piece, we are going to at least put to plus 12. And then we need to put some gear into Crozet's. Or some charms into crozets. I kind of want this to roll speed, to be honest. Okay, it didn't roll speed, whatever. Uh, I was hoping this could end up being like an 18 speed early game piece. It'd be sick. So this is going to have to be our cigarette for clearing today. It should work just fine. The thing is, we're going to probably have to manual Wyvern 13 today. We're going to have to manual a lot of the stages today. And I'm going to come back through, or come back, like stop the guide and then beat it all and then come back. So, and I will explain what I did to beat it whenever I come back. But in terms of manualing it, that is one thing that will teach you guys quite a bit about the game. So I would like you guys to do that part if, if you can. So we do have a plus 15 item here and it has effectiveness. So we did probably mess up on Mui. Yeah, so we messed up on Mui. So I'm glad I looked at that. So now going into Mui, we can go into this. We're gonna sort by attack and we're going to throw Tyria's piece on him. Now we're losing some effectiveness because this ring does have some, but we already have a leveled up piece to clear this for today. So that is the important part. Yes, we're going to get unlucky and probably have to do it a couple times to clear it the first time. But if you are a player who thinks that you should be farming Wyvern 13 nonstop once you get to day five, I'll tell you right now it is not efficient and I'll tell you why. So as a new player, you are going to be getting 10 days of new player buffs. So with 10 days of new player buffs, the most efficient thing you can do for the first 10 days is farm for five stars or for six stars. You want to be farming unrecorded history as much as possible. So by farming unrecorded history as much as possible right now, getting the extra um, six star material. And also you're gonna be selling a lot of penguins for gold. You're gonna to wanna to stockpile gold, especially if you want to follow my mystic metal early game player uh, guide. So with the Mystic Metal Early Game Player Guide, you have the uh, or option to spend like 20 million gold for a ton of like 20 million gold for 40 Moonlight or uh, Mystic Summons. So 40 Mystic Summons is a pretty good chance to get ML Landy. So you are going to want to keep this farming. You, I would personally, I'm going to end up burning probably 4,000 Sky Stones just in refreshing Unrecorded History, if not 5,000. So it's going to be a lot. So let's go in and look at our team now, uh, just real quick again. So here's our cigarette. She is going to be the main damage dealer for today. Here's the Crozet, 24,308 tankiness. Should be enough to keep, or to keep him alive to beat it. If we find that we are not able to beat it, we'll come back and bulk or beef up our characters a little bit. So our Terranor Guard is looking very, very scuffed. I'm actually going to upgrade the boots some before we go into it. So let me at least put them up to plus 12. I think this is guaranteed crit damage. Oh, no, it's not. Wow. I just got super lucky on my one of my accounts then. So the faster Terranor Guard is, the more turns he's going to take. And one thing with the last level of speed boots, you see I'm only getting two per one, but the last level of speed boots, you're going to get plus six. I think to put, yeah, plus six. So the last level is the most beneficial level, and that's how it is for all right side gear. So whenever you're leveling up, you'll be at 50 crit damage at plus 14 or something or 55 crit damage, it goes up to 65. So you get the biggest boost on your piece from going from level 14 to level 15. But this should end up working just fine. 
this is going to be okay. So let's go in and try it. And if this doesn't work, I showed all four character stats. If this doesn't work, I will show you what to upgrade next. Um, in terms of your other characters, real quick before I go in and do it, your, your front tank should look like this no matter who it is. If it's um, Rose, if it's whoever, should look like this. You're going to be using Cigarette no matter what because we all got her for free. If you don't have Mui, this gear can be put on Alexa. So Alexa could be your option for that. And your Terranor Guard gear, if you do not have Terranor Guard, can be used, um, this gear can be used on Furious. So your Furious will look about like this. So there you go, that is your teams. So now let's go ahead and go and start clearing through the Wyvern. So like I said, I'm gonna do this part off the video. And if I run into any problems, I will talk about it whenever we come back. All right, so I've beaten up to Wyvern 13. And one thing when going up to beating up to Wyvern 13, you are going to want to make sure there's a Conclave mission that is beat up to Wyvern 5 and then beat Wyvern 7. Once you beat Wyvern 7, you will have to, or if you do these and haven't done this before, go check your conclave. You will want to make sure you clear these challenges because this allows you to trade in for resources. So I'm going to go ahead and show you that real quick. And then we're going to do Wyvern 13 together. So I'm going to try Wyvern 13. If I fail it, then I will keep recording until I get a successful run. But like I said, this today's video is just about clearing Wyvern for the first time. So you want to get to where you beat Wyvern 13 and finish up the store, or beat Wyvern 13, and then you're probably going to go back and farm Wyvern 11 on auto, unless you want to manual Wyvern 13 20 times, it would be the best value, but uh, this is a lot of work. So you want to make sure that if you go into crafting materials and go down to Wyvern, you can craft up to the highest of Wyvern. You want to do this for all different ones of these as we're going through. So make sure you go to Conclave, and it's going to say beat Wyvern 357. 357 make sure you do that because this will unlock to where you can trade in for these every single day so or every single day for the beginning so you can see you can trade 48 of these and you're going to end up getting crafting materials for this which is huge so and then we're going to start a little bit of crafting in tomorrow's video so whatever resources you get make sure you do those five trade-ins today and then tomorrow we'll do, I'll show a little bit of crafting and kind of what you should craft first, basically. So let's go ahead and go into our Wyvern 13 now and go and do it. So if any of you are struggling to get to Wyvern 13, like I said, uh, if we're just trying to beat this once to clear the, the mission. So if you're trying to do that and really struggling, you're going to be needing to manual all, pretty much Wyvern 11, 12, and 13. So if you are trying to do this, join the Discord and we will help you. So you're going to fail most likely. So right here, if this were to attack my Mui or Terranor Guard three times, I would be dead already and I'd have to restart. So there's a good chance we're going to have to run this up to five, ten times to beat it. So whenever going in, you kind of can look at their bars and play, try to play smartly. I'm going to go ahead and just rip us through here. Um, and it, this will, I don't think you guys have probably manual many stages, so this will actually be kind of good practice for you trying to learn how to do this. So let's go ahead and kill this one. Hopefully I beat it on the first try. I, I beat all the other ones on the first try, but it's all gonna come down to if I get lucky and land the debuffs or not. Okay, so now we can go and for the beginning, it will always attack your front tank in Wyvern 13. That's why it's always suggested to farm Wyvern 11, 12, or 13. First, because the other ones, the reward sucks. Second, so we already got the attack down, we got defense break. So with Wyvern 13, you need to make sure you have two debuffs on him at all times. By having two debuffs on him at all times, he will only attack your front tank. If you were to not have two debuffs, he will have a chance to attack any character on your board. It could be your front tank and you get lucky. But that is why it is so important to have a tank as your front uh, unit. All right, so we got three debuffs, four debuffs. This is huge. Okay, so now he's going to guarantee attack the front. Say he attacked the back and killed a back unit, though, there's no way we would, we would clear this. So if this was on auto, your healer right here would probably be at full HP because they would have just healed instead of attacked. And then you would be struggling. So we got defense break again. Perfect. So now this is why you manual it. You can soul burn cigarette. And this is why you want the 75 EE if you got it because you get an additional hit right there. And you will always get that with cigarette in that spot. So as you see, this is going pretty smoothly. Let's try to get two-turn defense break. We landed it. This run went perfect. This is hilarious. I love this. We got our attack break again. So we are guaranteed enough debuffs. And our cigarette, I believe, has us three. We have defense break. And cigarette has us three. This should close to kill it, if not kill it. That is the perfect run. But that is how fast. Okay, it didn't kill it. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. We're, we're fine. We're fine. We shouldn't be able to lose it from here. 
Oh yeah, dual attack for Terranor Guard to finish it. That's why you Mola his S2. Okay, so let me go ahead and show my Mui and Terranor Guard Molas, but that is all you have to do. Once you're done with that, bang. Now we can do a bunch of summons, which is exciting. So that's all you have to do. Day five, Wyvern 13, clear, no problem. If you're using different characters, struggling, join Discord, we'll walk you through it. it I'm telling you, it's very easy. So you're looking at all these, these have the highest rate to get five-star characters in the game. This account has not summoned a single five-star character yet. <laughs> So hopefully we get that. So going into this, you need to clear Wyvern 7 or higher 20 times. So I need to clear this another 13 times. You want to make sure to do this right away once you're done with this. And then you can move your gear back to the, their proper characters. And then we will be working on the rest of this after and trying to get it done today so we can start Golem. So going into this, let's go ahead and claim all of our goodies we just got. See if we can get lucky on our summons. And I'm going to go ahead and set Wyvern farming in the background. And I personally, if you want to just do Wyvern 13 and manual it like I just did, you could auto it and there's a chance that it'll it'll just beat it. But you're probably going to fail most of your runs right now. So your team is not fully set up, but I taught you how to build your teams and the stat thresholds and the units to use. So hopefully this was able to help you. But for me for right now, since Wyvern 11 is easy, I'm going to go ahead and set this with what my regular pet because I'm not too worried about that the biggest thing is clearing this so we can start getting the other gear sets so now it is summon time but hopefully this guy helped i that went so smoothly i'm super excited that it went so smoothly so i'm gonna go ahead and just rip a 10 summon still no five stars wow a tiger hell's book though that's huge so tiger hell's book and then we got a few other um decent things so we are also going to do an ml summon what do you think? all right my audio is crackling a little bit i'm sorry for that i'll try to fix it okay so let's buy this okay it's not fixing so i'm just gonna go ahead and turn the audio pretty much off so that um you guys don't hear the crackling but it'll be a little awkward for the rest of the video so if you got lucky and got tamarin you can be summoning on landy if you are watching this guide when landy is not available if there's a limited summon character up you can be summoning on them one issue though is if you get really close to getting Landy, you're going to want to finish her, meaning you need the Sky Stones to do it. Every 950 Sky Stones is 50 summons. So if you, it, to pity a character, it costs 12,000 Sky Stones to pity a character. So the problem is if you're summoning on one of these, you don't get them and their banner is about to go away, you have to make the executive decision whether or not you're going to finish them around. That's why it's always advised to make sure you have enough Covenant bookmarks plus your Sky Stones to pity a character if you're going to summon on their banner because if you don't then you could do a bunch of summons on their banner and then you don't get them and you wasted that technically because every single time you use a summon it should be basically you should feel like you're progressing toward pity even though most of the time you won't pity well hopefully most of the time you shouldn't pity but just keep that in mind there's a chance that if you do not have the resources and you start a banner you won't be able to finish the banner but if you if you want to, this would be the banner summoned on because Landy's fantastic. But just know you might get in that position where you're gonna have to burn sky stones and you will probably be poor from that point, depending on how close you get. Because there is a, what one week left of Landy? Yeah, one week left as of today to get her. So I don't know if I'll summon on her on this account or not. But let's go ahead and do our moonlight summon. Give me a five star. I haven't got a single five star. Oh my gosh, this account's cursed. Not even a four. Oh, okay, it's just a four star. Watch Ashuri, he's pretty good. He's good for one-shotting and uh, late game PvP and once you get him imprinted. So we do have summons for Tamron. So two things I want to go over real quick too is this is how you're going to be getting a lot of your bookmarks is I'm, I told you to save it, lock one of every character. And then once you lock one of every character, you are going to end up getting them to triple S the more you summon. Once you get them to triple S, you will be finishing a challenge down here that is unlock a devotion skill grade SSS for a hero. That gives you a ton of bookmarks. That's probably one of the like biggest extra bookmark things you can do within the game. So I, I saved that to do during this video. So this already gives me two triple S characters. You get them for free. And then from there, you will be trying to triple S um, characters that you saw off banners. Also, the next way to get bookmarks is friendship farming. So as you're farming unrecorded history, once we go back to it, once your characters start getting to friendship 10, you're going to want to be switching them out for other characters. So our team for clearing unrecorded history, we're going to be doing stage 30 from here on out because I cleared up to uh, unrecorded history, the full story. So we're going to be clear or doing stage 30 because that is the most efficient one that you can do in terms of getting best rewards. So we will claim all this, unlocks that, and then claim this for Wyvern, and we're good to go. So we just got a ton more bookmarks from that, and we just need one more character to triple S. But as you see, we now have 74 bookmarks. That's a huge jump. 
So now we're going to look at our story sum. We are 47 from Pity for Tamarin. So please, please just give me one. It's still not one. Wow, another steadfast gatekeeper. So let me talk about artifacts real quick. I told you guys to start with Aureus. So if you're using a front tank for your Wyvern team, you can go ahead and use Aureus. That's what I did there. It helps keep your backline alive. But if you get Steadfast Gatekeeper, this is actually better on your front tank than using Aureus. So this will keep your front tank alive even more, even though you don't really need it. So I wouldn't say it's better. Um, the thing is you could just use Aureus because you're going to end up using Aureus for PvP later. So having it leveled up for now and then moving it later is just better overall. And this is elite and boss monsters. I don't know. I think Aureus just might be better overall. This would be better for just using it in Wyvern. But the thing is, we're going to be using Crozet now as a character on our core team when farming through story. So instead of Araz, now that Crozet's geared up, we're just going to throw Crozet there. And hopefully we can get Tamarin. Like, this is insane. The fact that I haven't got one five-star through all the summons I've done on this account is actually painful. Like, I'm going to have to pity her at this rate. Which is what it is what it is. That's that's part of summoning on this game. You either are super lucky or you're just getting what I'm getting. So here's our best chance to get five star characters. We're going to do our elemental summons. This is how you usually stock up on extra five stars on your account besides the summon tickets. You're going to get summon ticket after day seven login. You get a free character or a free artifact, and then you also get a free character. And then um, this is an event that's going on right now. There will probably be some kind of event if you guys are starting the game later. This gives an extra or a five-star hero and a five-star artifact. But they're completely random, so you never know what you're going to get out of it. But you will get some five-stars from that. So these we all have to do single summons for. No, so there's Jenna. No spark again. No, These have the highest rates in the game to get five-stars, though. And four stars. Your four star rate with this is very high too. Just so you are aware, your four star rate is very high. Oh my god. <laughs> and that is crazy. You should at least get one four star, possibly one five star from that. That is unbelievable that I didn't. So this has a super high chance to get a five star, which we didn't. We got a four star. We got an extra Croza. That's fine. There, our first five star on the account. What is it? It is a warrior. It is a Tayu. Fantastic. I don't think I'll be able to use them <laughs> at all. <laughs> we might try. All right, so two four stars and a five star. But as you see, these should, on average, each one you complete should give you one. It should give you one five star. Should. And as unlucky as my account's been, the fact that I got one, I think that's pretty, that's what I've been saying, is you should get one per hunt event that you do. So you, you get the free five star and then the five star from some tickets. It's not guaranteed, but you have a pretty good chance. So one thing that will be changing for us that are playing right now, Terranor Guard is currently on this artifact. With the Guilty Gear collab coming, if those of you that are playing right now or started later, you want the Guilty Gear. But for those of us that are playing now, one of the reasons I'm suggesting Terranor Guard is we are getting an artifact called Junkyard Dog. We will be switching Junkyard Dog onto Terranor Guard once we get it because it makes it to where when you every time you do a single target attack, you have a chance to burn the enemy. You can burn the Wyvern, making your debuffs more consistent. By having that artifact, your Wyvern runs will be way more consistent. You'll get less damage out of Terranor Guard, but by the time we rebuild our Wyvern team, you're going to have more damage on your cigarette and your movie is going to be stronger too, so you will be fine. But Wyvern, a lot of Wyvern is about trying to make your team as consistent as possible. So that is one reason that I'm like saying to use Terranor Guard. Uh, because Furious is fantastic, but if you have Mui, do not use Mui Furious. If you don't need to. Uh, Mui, Mui Terranor Guard is just better in terms of overall debuffs that you're going to be able to get. Because there's also a 5-star artifact that is called Cradle of Life. If you get the Cradle of Life artifact, and you can put that on Terranor Guard instead, which is fantastic so if you see the artifact it's a warrior artifact five star cradle of life but that is all i got for this video the only other thing i can show real quick is skill enhancements so like i said if you're doing wyvern you want to enhance your skills up to the effect chance every single time no matter what for whatever effect it is but for your damage shows you want to do maximum damage too and then this is a really good one because it gives you an extra 10 percent chance to dual attack every time so but you do not need to do skill three at all because whenever you're auto farming wyvern you will be turning off skill three which i forgot to do here but it's still beating it so it's fine and then for mui same thing as much damage as you can get out of him this one uh all of them are worth doing this one's damage is the least 
important one because he only uses a skill every three turns. So your most important thing is to do uh, these two up to the max. And then this one, you want to the max effect chance. So if you have Mui, that's what you do. And I showed Terran, or uh, I showed Furious, Furious. If you're using him, then you're going, if Alexa, you want to post her up as much as possible. She's a damage dealer. Furious, you want to go to the effect chance on here and you want to get this one turn cooldown and you want to get the effect chance up to here. That's one reason I don't like pushing Furious is that is a lot of Molagora. He's a four-star character. He takes Molagora. So if you can avoid using Furious, it's good, but using Furious can make it to where your characters are much more consistent in terms of their um, crit chance and everything. So he has his benefits, but he also has his downfalls in comparison to using a three-star hero that you do not need to put stuff into. Hopefully this guide helped. Hopefully I covered everything. Again, if there's any questions you have, comment them down below. If you're new to the channel, if you're willing to subscribe, that'd be great. I'm going to be making the golem part probably within a day or two. And then we're going to be making the banshee part within another day or two after that. And then once we're done with all three and we do all of our five-star summons, our accounts are going to look amazing come day around day 10. We're all going to be looking very, very good. And then from there, I'll be showing you what to do to progress your account. There's going to be some crafting guide uh, portions over the next few days. Lots of stuff to cover. If you have anything you would like me to cover, comment it down below. And that's all I got for this video. Join Discord if you need a guild. Join Discord if you need help with Wyvern. Just join the Discord if you want to play Epic 7 on emulator. Um, a link down in the description for LD Player 9. That's what I currently use. You could also go to the top of the comments. There will be a pinned comment that has the emulator download link and the Discord invite uh, to the join server. But all right, I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out.